December 7th, 1941, a day that will live in infamy. Japanese aircraft launch a devastating attack on the U.S. Pacific Fleet at Pearl Harbor. America, a reluctant nation, isolated, no more, mobilizes to stop Japanese aggression in the Pacific. Admiral Yamamoto Isoruku, the Japanese fleet commander and mastermind of the Pearl Harbor attack, plans to draw out the American fleet and destroy its aircraft carriers that operate unchallenged from the mid-Pacific to New Guinea. Meanwhile, a tireless staff of American intelligence experts cleverly breaks the Japanese military command code, giving Admiral Chester Nimitz, commanding the Pacific Fleet, a peek into Japanese planning. In time, the American intelligence staff deduces to within five miles and five minutes the location of a Japanese battle force preparing to expand its deadly grip in the Pacific. The enemy target? Midway, a strategically important atoll called the Century for Hawaii by the Japanese, home to an American air base and within easy striking distance of the Hawaiian Islands. Yamamoto plans to take the atoll then use it as a base from which to destroy the rest of the U.S. Pacific Fleet and solidify the Japanese hold throughout the region. The intel work arms the Americans with an idea of Japanese intentions. Nimitz deploys a carrier striking group centered on carriers USS Enterprise, Hornet, and Yorktown to support forces based at Midway. Three American carriers to four Japanese. Even with the intel, the outcome is anything but certain. On the other side, Vice Admiral Nagumo Chuichi, Yamamoto's carrier commander, is overconfident in his advantage. He believes the American fleet is not positioned to defend against his onslaught. Instead, the Americans successfully and courageously fend off the June 4th air assault on Midway, shooting down key leaders within the strike group and disrupting Japanese operations. The two massive fleets finally make first contact when Hornet's Torpedo Squadron 8, with no fighter support, attacks the Japanese carriers. The Japanese shoot down all the American aircraft and inflict heavy damage on the Enterprise and Yorktown torpedo squadrons. The American torpedo attacks come on the heels of the disruptive attacks from Midway-based planes. This compels Nagumo to rearm his second strike to engage the American carrier task force rather than a second attack on Midway as planned. That's when American dive bombers discover the Japanese fleet and scream down onto their exposed enemy. Within minutes, three of the Japanese carriers are in flames and taking on water. Aviation fuel and ordnance are on the decks of the Japanese carriers, compound the damage done by the American bombs, and soon the three carriers begin one-way journeys to the bottom of the Pacific. Hiryu, the lone remaining Japanese carrier, retaliates, inflicting serious damage to Yorktown. Later that same day, she attacks her prey again. But before Hiryu can make her escape, American carrier aircraft, some orphaned from Yorktown, send the Japanese ship to join her fellow carriers at the bottom of the sea. Unfortunately for Yorktown, after two days of intense damage control, a Japanese sub spots the carrier in the assisting destroyer Heyman on June 6th. The sub fires on both, forcing their crews to abandon their sinking ships. American losses include 144 Navy and Marine Corps aircraft, the carrier Yorktown, the destroyer Hammond, and 307 sailors. The Japanese losses prove far more severe. Four carriers, a heavy cruiser, 256 planes and more than 3,000 sailors. A stunning blow to the Japanese fleet and the beginning of the end of their dominance in the Pacific. The decisive Battle of Midway, an American victory and the turning point of the war in the Pacific.